The sequencing of the genome has brought to light several mutations which are responsible for varied types of disease, including cancer. Next generation sequencing particularly has simplified and revolutionized the process of sequencing and made this easily accessible to patients and clinicians. Targeting these mutations with specific treatments for individual genomic variations has led to the customized treatment of personalized medicine for patients and what is known, a lot, known more as precision oncology. So this has increased opportunity for treatment of our patients. Unfortunately, Africa has trailed behind. There's been a lot of progress with respect to management of cancer patients and even some use of targeted therapy on the African continent. However, there's still lack of knowledge and also in most cases, financial constraints and availability of the adequate logistics to be able to make this really a part of cancer management in Africa. And another thing is that there's also lack of well-developed cancer registries in most countries in Africa. Some are building them up. There are some countries who have population cancer registries and very few who have established cancer registries. So these are all limitations, significant limitations into the improvement of genomic research in Africa. Genomics is also being studied in some parts of Africa, but there's still a dearth of knowledge and data that have to be um, realized. Yeah, so the Special Virtual Genomics Conference sought to develop a network of scientists who can lead genomic science in Africa, and also to develop a special interest group on genomics in AOTIC, and then to develop a research agenda for Africa. And there was an overarching goal of cancer genomics research in Africa to develop an African cancer genomic atlas eventually. So these were the major goals that we were looking at. highlights of the genomic conference. I'll start of all, first of all, talking about the fact that we had a three-day conference. Day one and two were the actual conference where we had a number of speakers and keynote speakers from Africa, the diaspora, and the U.S. Friends of Africa who spoke on various aspects of genomics. We also had a day three aspect of the conference, which was by invitation only. And in that, we actually looked at specific goals and objectives that we wanted to come out with, looking at the whole conference goal. So for day one, we had a number of speakers. In fact, first of all, we had some remarks by a welcome address. I gave the welcome address as a chair. And then we had another welcome address by the AOTIC president, Dr. Bello. And we also had another welcome, more or less, address by Dr. Folakemi, Professor Folakemi Odedina, and she is the Aortic Research Committee chairperson. So I just wanted to say something important about the Aortic Research Committee because the genomics planning was actually a baby, more or less, of the research committee of Aortic. And the research committee of Aortic has five specific groups. The one group that looks at research agenda, the second group looks at research funding, the third group is to into research infrastructure and collaborations. And the fourth group is on dissemination of African cancer research. And that is the group under which the genomics planning committee sort of was formed. So that, that group seeks to actually through scientific conferences, peer review journals and traditional media, social media propagate work that is being done in Africa. And one of the things we had wanted to look at was some special virtual conferences, which included genomics. So that is the first we have actually come up with. And then the fifth group under the AOTIC Research Committee is a special interest groups. We have these in AOTIC and we are able to subdivide people under their specialties into various groups to help also promote um, research. So the main aspect of the conference, we had a number of speakers and our speakers started with um, Dr. Solomon Rotimi, who is the Aortic Research Committee co-chair. And he also spoke about the, what who an African is, the, the, the specific genetic traits in Africa, the variants we have in Africa, some clinical trials that have been done in Africa to actually follow 
the, the, the genomics and um, variations in, in heredit hereditary, I mean, in, in Africa, more or less variations in Africa. So he spoke about that. Then we had Dr. John Captain in the US who followed up with some talk about various aspects of cancers, various cancers. He looked at breast cancer, um, colorectal cancer, prostate cancer, and research that have been done in these specific areas as well. And he also specifically, sorry, <laughs> he also specifically discussed the developments in racial disparity in studies that have been done in different types of cancers, suggesting that uncovering health disparity and um, related factors provides more depth in understanding the disease etiology. So this was the key highlight of his um, talk. Then this was followed by a talk by Dr. Pedro Fernandez, who actually looked at the importance of ethics in genomics. So he focused on the importance of research ethics and the fair selection of study populations and favorable risk benefits issues and importance of um, independent reviews as well. He also was followed by Dr. Melissa Davis, who also looked at the effective management of genomic data which is absolutely important. And especially when you're trying to do trials in Africa, you, you have to be very cautious about the genomic data management because people are very skeptical about um, releasing, I mean, information on, on, on genomics, genetics, even culturally, some, some things are, are really not accepted by the African people as at now. So genomic data and how it's handled and you know, all is very important. Professor Kosje Yamwa also ended day one by talking about the utilization of oncologic care with a focus on precision medicine. Then we had some oral abstract presentations which were recorded, pre-recorded. We listened to them and then there were there was a summary by Dr. Dr. Peter Kingham and Dr. Melissa Davis. So for day two, we also had a number of presentations. Um, Professor Lisa Newman, who is a breast cancer specialist, also spoke about um, breast cancer and the various variations um, that we have in breast cancer, the global distribution, the burden of the African-American um, patient who has breast cancer, and um, socioeconomic disparities and all. This was followed by a talk by Professor Timothy Rebeck, who spoke about prostate cancer and what the MADCAP is doing, that is the uh, men of African descent who are prostate cancer, what work they are doing in Africa as well. He also spoke about the epidemiology and that Africa is a hotspot for prostate cancer mortality. And even if you look at the African-Americans um, and in re relation to prostate cancer, there, there's greater than 80% incidence in African-Americans with prostate cancer and you have more than twice mortality in African Americans compared to the Caucasians. So that was what Professor Timothy Rebeck spoke about. Then we also had um, Professor Olumu, uh, um, Fumi Olopade, who also is a breast cancer, also does a lot of genetics in breast cancer. She also spoke about the evidence of heritability of cancer in Africa and um, breast cancer genetic studies that have been done in Nigeria, especially and sub-Saharan black women versus the white Caucasian women, and also spoke about the benefits and risks of um, cancer genetic testing in Africa. Dr. Peter Kingham then spoke about colorectal cancer and some studies that have also been done in Nigeria with respect to that. Then we also had Dr. Julie Johnston also from Florida. She spoke about pharmacogenomics in, in, in cancer and how um, genomics and genetics have to do with the management and the I mean, pharmacology of, of the management of these cancers. Finally, we had um, Dr. Howard McLeod, who is also from Florida and the US, and he also spoke about the importance of precision oncology in genomics and the management of patients. Then this was followed by the second round of oral abstract presentations. But the other important thing we did was a poster Twitter session and that happened on the first day. So those who, everyone who presented their posters actually had the posters on Twitter and we had people following and that um, created a lively kind of environment for, for research dissemination. So the basic thing about this um, conference has been that we wanted to disseminate what is known in Africa 
and what I mean, so that we, we actually know where, what the status quo is and how we're going to move forward beyond that. Some of the plans that we came up with and those were the things we looked at or we discussed at the day three of the conference. Some of them were to overcome the limitations that we have, to organize more local regional conferences, to help integrate researchers in Africa who are interested in genomics with each other and also with our, our colleagues and friends in the US who have already done a lot of research in genomics. We also wanted to institutionalize and strengthen what we call the special interest groups, like I mentioned before in genomics, by reaching out to researchers around the world who are willing to join and then help um, improve on these collaborations, also to build capacity and possibly to commercialize cancer research as well. So these were some of the things we looked out for. And then we also wanted to look at genetic diagnostics, you know, because of the cultural and um, social cultural aspect of our, of our African kind of ethnicity and all, we needed to look at how we could improve on genetic diagnosis and genetic counseling in our African countries, how we can integrate that into um, our, our teaching institutions, I mean, so that people understand a lot more about it. People are trained in genetic counseling, our patients understand it, provide, I mean, possibility for patients to have, I mean, genetic counseling and also genetic diagnosis for whatever, um, especially for cancer patients. So they really understand, I mean, for the proband and also for family members of cancer patients. We, we realize that it's very important to ensure that whoever is counseling these people really understand what it is about because there are a lot of, I mean, legal issues, especially in, in the area of genetics, so that we, we can really get a hang on that. And also in through that, improve the, the management of cancers with respect to targeted therapy that is available for patients who have specific mutations. And then we also wanted to, we also proposed an R13 grant, which we are working on with some colleagues in the US. And in that, we're trying to work on a program outline, possible funding for that, so that at the next AOTIC conference in 2021, in year, in November 2021, Dakar, Senegal, hopefully we'll maybe have a hybrid conference where we have an in um, um, conference and also a virtual one where people can have actual, I mean, lectures on genomics. So this will be an extension of what we've done currently, and also at that time, bring together other people who are interested in genomics to actually come on board so that this special interest group in genomics we have formed will be able to move forward with to do greater things in Africa. Well, I, I'd like to say that, I mean, this, this is a premier virtual conference that we have organized in Africa. I think it is one conference that has brought together, I mean, a lot of people with interest in genomics. We had so many people attending the conference and it's brought to light what has been done in Africa because people had been doing various researches in parts of Africa, I mean, in collaboration with colleagues outside um, Africa. But we, it wasn't really a collaborative kind of thing. So, so it was in isolated cases, but now we actually know what is being done and, from there, I think it, it, there's a lot of um, prospect for development on the continent. And you know, I mean, all roads lead to Africa. So as, as Dr. Rotimi said, all, all, all roads, and as um, Professor Odedina also said, all roads lead to Africa. So really, it is um, now the, um, the fact that there are a lot of racial and, and disparities, there are a lot of um, genetic variations and all in the African continent. There's still a lot that we, we can learn from doing research in Africa. So we know what the genetic diversities are and racial disparities in various ways. So we can we can help to improve genomics in, in this continent and also things that haven't been known in the area of genomics and genetics can be known from research in Africa. So I think this is a very exciting development. The time could, I mean, it's, it's very right. And, and I, I hope that we'll be able to move forward to also 
um, be able to sequence the African genome. I think that that would be the greatest thing that, that we could do. Thank you. Thank <music> you.